Hello and welcome to the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. Welcome back, friends. I am so glad that you are here. We have been learning much about the life of Jesus, and today we are going to learn even more. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be one of the disciples of Jesus when he was alive on this earth? Jesus had chosen 12 disciples to train and teach in the ways of the kingdom of God, and they went everywhere with Jesus. They followed him, helped him, listened to him, obeyed him, and learned from him. Sometimes they were even confused by him. But for three years, the disciples ministered with Jesus and traveled with him all throughout Israel. One day, Jesus came to his own country, the region from where he had grown up, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. They had watched Jesus grow up from the time he was a young boy. They knew him as a child, and here he was teaching and preaching to them about the ways of God. So Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. And because they did not believe that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, come to save He could do no mighty work there, except that he had laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve disciples to him. He knew it was time that they be sent out to minister just as he had taught them to do. So Jesus began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. And so the disciples went out to the cities and towns, and just as Jesus had taught them, they preached that people should repent of their sins and be forgiven. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. They were so excited. They were called apostles, not just disciples, because an apostle is somebody who goes out and spreads the good news and shares it with others. A disciple is somebody who learns from someone else. They were now both disciples and apostles. They had gone out just as Jesus told them, and they had shared the good news. They saw people healed. They saw demons cast out because of the authority of Jesus, not because of anything in their strength, not because of anything they could do, but because Jesus had given them the authority to be able to do so. They were so excited. They preached and shared the good news. They saw people repent and receive forgiveness. It was exciting because now they were not only just listening to Jesus, they were actually doing what Jesus had taught them to do. And because of this, even more people began to come and surround Jesus. Even more people began to travel to hear his message, to hear him preach, to see him heal those who came to him who were sick and needed healing. The word began to spread, and because so many people were coming and going, They did not even have a chance to eat. Jesus said to his disciples, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd waiting for him, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. 
send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. Then Jesus turned to them and said something that surprised them. They were not expecting what Jesus was about to say. He said, you give them something to eat. Wait, what? What did Jesus just say? How were the disciples to feed this many people? It looked like there were thousands of people out there. Where were they to get the money, the food? The disciples said to him, that would take more than a half a year's wages to pay for all the food to feed all these people. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? Then Jesus asked, how many loaves do you have already? How much food do you have right now? He said, go and see. When they found out, they came back to Jesus and said, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Think about that for a moment, true seekers. Five loaves and two fish. I don't know about you, but when I am super hungry, just me alone could eat five loaves of bread and two fish. How is that supposed to feed thousands of people? Then Jesus directed the disciples to gather the people into groups as they sat on the green grass. So the disciples ordered the people into groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, Jesus gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them. I can only imagine as the disciples gathered baskets to hand out the broken pieces of five loaves of bread and two fish what they must have been thinking. They might have been thinking, has Jesus finally lost his mind? How is this going to work? What are we going to do? Surely they could not pass out enough food for all of these people. But then something amazing happened. As the disciples began to hand out bread and fish to the people, they did not run out. The more they reached their hands into the baskets, the more food they pulled out. The bread and fish kept multiplying. As the disciples continued to hand out the bread and fish, every single person who had come to hear Jesus speak, all of them ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of leftover food. That's right, there was so much that they had leftovers. 12 basketfuls, one for each of the 12 disciples. And do you know, friends, how many people ate that day? Do you know the total number of people that they fed with just five loaves of bread and two fish? The Bible says that the number of people who ate that day was 5,000. Jesus had taken five loaves of bread and two fish and multiplied it to feed 5,000 people. Well, immediately after this, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside alone to pray. Later that night, the disciples were in the boat, and the boat was in the middle of the lake, while Jesus was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to meet them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the water, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Can you imagine looking out upon the water and seeing a man walking on it? The disciples could not believe their eyes. They were so astonished. The only thing they could think was that it was a ghost. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood up until that point about the loaves and what Jesus had done. Their hearts were still hardened. They did not know that here before them was God himself in the form of a man. 
Only God could walk on water. Only God could multiply food to feed 5,000 people. Not in their wildest dreams could they imagine that this, this man standing before them in the boat was God himself. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, or countrysides, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Dear True Seekers, What we see Jesus do in these stories is a bit different than the previous stories we've learned. In much of our stories before this, we learned how Jesus healed the sick and cast out demons, but these stories show us so much more of who Jesus is. Not only could Jesus heal, raise the dead, and cast out demons, he could do so much more. He could multiply food and walk on water and calm the storm. No man who has ever lived could do such things. That's how we know that Jesus was not just a man, he was God. He was God's son come to earth for a special mission. The disciples just did not know yet what that mission was. They had not figured it out yet. Do you know that just as Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish, he can still multiply today. He is the God who multiplies, but he doesn't just multiply food. What do you need today? Do you need peace in your heart? Jesus can multiply peace to you. Do you need joy? Jesus can multiply the joy in your heart. Whenever you feel you are lacking, Jesus can multiply what you need. He is the God who multiplies. He does not just give us an addition equation. He gives us a multiplication equation, and he asks us to fill in the blank for whatever we need to be multiplied. Now, I'm not that great at math, But I do know that to multiply gives you bigger results than to add. Multiplication is greater than addition, and Jesus multiplies every time. He is so good. If you are empty and lonely and afraid and sad, give it to Jesus and he will multiply your joy and peace and strength and hope. The disciples only had five loaves of bread and two fish. You may not have much, but what you have, Jesus can multiply. If you have a little bit of joy or a little bit of of happiness or a little bit of peace, Jesus can multiply it and give you so much more. He is overflowing in all of his goodness to those who would put their trust in him and believe. The people from Jesus' hometown would not believe that he was God, and so Jesus could not do much in their town. But for those who believe, for those who put their trust in him, watch out. Jesus is ready to do so much more. Trust him to multiply what you need today. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Mark chapter 6. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you are the God who multiplies. You can multiply all things, and you have even called us to go out and be fruitful and multiply. You have called us to share the good news with others so that more and more people will come to know you. It is in our nature to multiply. Jesus, for those listening today who need more of you, will you come to them and multiply what they need? If they need joy or peace or hope, will you multiply that in their hearts today as they put their trust in you? Thank you for being such a good, good God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it's time to catch up on some reviews. So I'm going to read some reviews and messages that have come in recently. This message says, hi, my name is Copeland and I am nine years old and I love your podcast. This is from Fox. I guess that's his nickname, Fox. He just turned five and he says he thinks your podcast is fun to listen to. Well, thank you, Copeland, for sending that message in. This message says, hi, I'm Gemma and I'm five years old. My family and I listen to your podcast every night at the dinner table. My mom, dad, two-year-old little brother, and I love hearing the stories from the Bible. My favorite episode is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Thank you so much for sending that message in. That is also one of my favorite episodes. 
This message says, hi, Sherilyn. <clears throat> My name is Abigail. I'm seven, nearly eight years old. I've been listening to your podcast for one and a half years. I give you one billion stars. My favorite episode is Abigail, wise woman of God, because she was really brave to go to David. I love your podcast. I listen to them as I'm going to sleep. Bye. Love, Abby. Thank you, Abby, so much for sending that in. And thank you for the billion stars. This message comes from Johnny. He says, hi, my name is Johnny. I listen to Truth Seekers every day. I live in Hastings, Victoria, Australia. My favorite story is Jehoshaphat. Thank you for such great teaching. I love it. Well, thank you so much. That must be from um, dad who is Steve. So thank you, Steve and Johnny for writing in. This message is from Annabelle. She says, Dear Sherilyn, I enjoy your podcast so much. When my family and I listen to it during our breakfast, it starts our day listening to God's truth. Thank you for making this podcast. Keep up the good work. Annabelle, age 12. That was from her mom, Noelle. So thank you, Annabelle and Noelle, for listening. This message comes from Hudson. He says, Hi, Sherilyn. My name is Hudson, and I am five and a half years old. I listen to your podcast on the way to school every day. David and Goliath has been my favorite episode so far. I really liked the one where David became king, too. Thank you for posting these episodes. I really like them. Have a blessed day, ma'am. Hudson. Well, Hudson, you are so polite, and thank you so much for um, sending that message to me from, it looks like, mom, who's Megan. Thank you, Megan and Hudson, for listening. I'm so glad that you get to start the day off on your way to school listening to the podcast. All right, here are a couple reviews that have come in. This one says, my daughter loves your podcast. It helps her go to sleep and learn truths about God. Her favorite episodes are the ones about Queen Esther because she sometimes pretends she is Esther. Thank you for being a treasured part of her childhood. And that is from Caitlin A. Thank you so much for sharing that, Caitlin. This next review says, I am so thankful to have stumbled across your podcast. When I was pregnant with my fourth baby, I was really struggling to find wholesome biblical content for my older three. I'm so grateful to you for not watering the word down for children as I firmly believe they should experience the word as God gave it to us. It helps us in the morning by starting our day with Bible time. I've recommended it to multiple friends and family members as well. My seven-year-old Eleanor says, I love True Seekers. My favorite stories are Esther and the kings of Israel. I would give you a hundred stars. Five-year-old James says, I like True Seekers. I really like the Hebrew alphabet praying the Bible series. I liked hearing the verses and learning the letters. Three-year-old Matilda constantly asks for tooth sitas throughout the day and has surprised me immensely with how much she is retaining. What a joyful thing to see the word blossoming in young hearts. Oren is eight months, and I am so glad to have something wholesome and true for him to experience throughout infancy with his siblings. Thank you so much for the ministry you are doing for the young hearts throughout the world, the Macklin family. Well, thank you so much for that. So Eleanor, James, Matilda, and Oren, thank you so much for listening, and I love that you are uh, loyal truth seeker followers. Thank you, Mom, for writing that. That blesses me so much. All right, this next review says, <clears throat> I love your podcast. It is super encouraging and helpful. If you are reading this review, I want you to know that this podcast is so biblically appropriate. This is mainly for kids. So it must be appropriate for them, and it is absolutely clean. If you're an adult, you can give this to your kids. Lots of parents have their own boundaries, but if you need true Bible-based content, listen to True Seekers, one million stars. Well, that was a great review and plug for the podcast. Thank you. All right, this next review says, this podcast helps me to settle down at night and helps to calm me down. I really enjoy this podcast and I look forward to it every night. I think this is the best podcast ever. And that is from Jacob Simmons. Thank you, Jacob. All right, this review says, this has been a great listen with my daughter and I on our way to school, has created a lot of good discussion. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm glad that it has opened the door for good conversation to be built. 
All right. This last review says, we love listening to your podcast. It is so encouraging to see someone go through the majority of scripture. It's nice to have more of it covered than is often covered by kids' Bible books. Your voice is also so calm. My kids will sometimes say, maybe we should listen to some of the Bible when we are all having a rough moment. We also appreciate the questions you ask. Keep up the great work. Well, I love that, that that is just their go-to when they're having a rough moment to come back to the podcast and listen to the Bible. So that is wonderful to hear. Thank you everyone for continuing to send in your reviews, for continuing to support the podcast. You can also go over to patreon.com and subscribe if you want to financially support the podcast for at least $2 a month. It's uh, patreon.com forward slash Sherilyn R. Grant. Well, thank you for listening today, True Seekers, and I look forward to our time together next week.